Hi, everyone. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. This is Ask an Autism Mom Live, and I'm Jen Eggert of LackeyKid.com. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Ask an Autism Mom Live. I'm Jen Eggert of LackeyKid.com, and I go live every Monday on Facebook to help learn tips, share your insights, and meet other parents. For today's show, I'm actually going to be interviewing one of my best friends. I call her my tribe, my friend Pauline. She is a homeschool mom of a teenage boy and does homeschooling in a completely different way than I ever thought possible. When she first told me how she homeschooled, I kind of went, huh? But trust me. Listen to her. She's got some really great ideas. So if you know anyone who could use these tips, who's considering homeschool, or who wants a way to make homework better and easier, I really feel that today's show will help them. So please share on your timeline now or tag your friends in the comments below. We would love to share this information. I really think it will help. Even me with the homework with Riley, she's given me tips to make homework easier. I'm not sitting there for hours pulling my hair out going, is homework ever going to end? So I want to welcome those of you watching on Facebook or listening to our podcast on YouTube. If you want to get alerts to join us live and ask questions live, you can visit lackeykid.com forward slash live. We also have a new landing page I'd like to remind people of and let you know about. It is lackeykid.com forward slash ask, A-S-K. So please check that out. So I want to welcome everyone to today's show. Janina, welcome. I know I need this show too. And I want to welcome my mom. Hi, mommy. (laughs) I'm happy to see you made it today. So welcome everyone. Um, if you have any questions, I will have a part at the end for Pauline to sit down, explain questions. And then later today in the group, I will make a post in group and Pauline and I will try and answer as many homeschool questions and homework questions as we can. So if you're just joining us, you're listening to Ask an Autism Mom show, and we're having an interesting discussion about homeschool, how to figure out if it's right for you how to find out ways to fund it, and how to make it really beneficial to your family. I can't wait to dig into today's topic with you, but first, a huge shout out to our sponsor. Of course, our sponsor is LackeyKid.com, and this is our newest item out. We have our ball chair. This sits, you can sit on it and bounce for homework. You can rock on it, on your belly. Um... Last week, Matt, the OT, says that his kids hold it by the handles, they sit on it, and they bounce up and down like a jumperoo. So it is quite interesting, and it is wonderful. Don't forget, that just came out last week. So now, if you're just joining us, you're listening to Ask an Autism Mom, and we're talking about everything homeschool. We will also discuss how to optimize your life with your child who's in a traditional school and how to help them learn at home better. Pauline is a homeschool mom um, and has been for quite a few years to a teenage boy. Now, Pauline, I have a few questions for you today. Sure. Hi. First, I want to thank you for being on the show. You've been my best friend and I've been trying to talk you into this for a long time. Very long time. Very long so time. So first, what compelled you to start homeschooling and how long have you been doing it? Um, I have been doing it from the time that Matthew was born. Um, I have an older son that was in the public school. And because I seen similarities of Matthew um, not um, learning the traditional way, uh, we, ch- we, we decided to homeschool him from the very beginning. And so he is 13 now. So I've been homeschooling, what, seven years traditionally, as in reporting to the districts. Now, do you seek, uh, I know what you do, but can you let everyone else know about how you seek outside help 
and the resources you find for Matthew, because I know everyone here is homeschool and they think you're sitting at home all day working on work pages. And I know that's not you. <laughs> no. Um, he has a math teacher. She's a math tutor teacher. Um, he um, has a um, non-traditional, nothing I do tra is traditional, um, a non-traditional Orthian Gilliam tutor. She uh, teaches him a grammar. She teaches him writing. She teaches him uh, back in the day. She even taught him a different way of, of reading, um, just a different way of learning. It's not really just, you know, teaching and reading. She just taught him a different way of learning how to read and how to syllabicate, you know, instead of sitting there looking at the word and memorizing it, she taught him how. That's why he is at 13 and is learning Greek and Latin. Wow. I didn't know he was learning Greek. I knew we were working on Latin, but I didn't know about Greek. <laughs> yes. Now, how do you seek resources for him? Um, I, I, um, because we live in Ohio, we um, utilize the autism scholarship. Um, I don't know what all states have that, has that or does not have that. Um, our state has autism scholarship. Um, and also they have the John Peterson scholarship. Um, the autism scholarship gives us $27,000 a year to be able to, um, apply to speech, OT, um, physical therapy, um, his tutors, um, as long as he has an IEP, um, that will allow him to be able to have, utilize those scholarships. Now, I was going to talk about it later in the show, but I, I really think it comes in now because you used your scholarship money for it. Do you want to tell us about Matthew's extremely exciting <laughs> summer with the Wilds? Everybody, you're going to love this. She totally went off the grid and put him in a program for a week where he learned hands-on everything. But I didn't use a scholarship for that. It was another resource that I used uh, through the county that um, allowed us to be able to have a, a um, paid 500, first $500 for his um, summer camp. And because he has a love of reptiles and his dream is to become a reptile scientist, um, we had chosen to put him into the for a week at the wilds uh, where he went and spent a whole from seven, sad, Sunday to Saturday lived in a yerk, um, which is a round structure um, with 12, I think 12 other guys and four guides. And he literally did all the fun, normal things at a camping a summer camp kids do swimming, canoeing, fishing, etc. with the twist of he got to follow the herpetologist, follow the scientists, and um, go into the field, finding snakes and finding bugs. And he actually found an, a bug that, a beetle that was released recently that was extinct here in Ohio. And they found him. And that was like three miles um, from the release area. So, um, it was really, really, really cool for him. And he got to see what it would be like to do that and take care of the animals there that was on the conservation. So he really enjoyed it. Now, I know Matthew. I know Matthew very well. He actually has his own Facebook page. Is it a page or a group? It's a group. It's a group. He has his own Facebook group where he talks everything reptiles. He rehabs reptiles. He owns a number of reptiles. <laughs> Pauline is a much stronger woman than I am. But how do you use his love of reptiles to help him learn? Like, um, honestly, he, you know, to go back to what all reptiles we have in our house, to be able to explain that a little bit better, we have three ball pythons, two um a, ma a, a, a mating pair of what, what albino checkered garter snakes 
a Pac-Man frog, a crested gecko, and a bearded dragon, and a colony of Dubai roaches, which are the Dubai roaches is who, uh, and he learns how to take care of each animal. Uh, he's even learning how to how to take pictures properly um, by by those animals. Um, he I whenever he has a writing assignment, instead of me sitting there saying, you know, you have to write about whatever the book says. We, I look at him and say, write about your best friend, write about your, the, the, your favorite reptile. And he will write about his buttercup, his ball python or something like that. So, you know, he's, he's learning how to research by looking at, you know, his, his ball pythons. Okay. What is one of the, one of those reptiles that he's rehabbing right now is not, eating properly. So he has to find out why are they not eating properly? He has to go in, on the internet and look that up and I'll have him do a page before we chose to do a, to do the mating of the garter snakes. He had to find out, he had to do a two page report to me exactly everything about how to mate reptiles or well, the garters. How, you know, what all do they give live birth? Do they give, do they do eggs, etc. So that's, you know, He's learning how to re how to research and write. Now, one thing I really love about how you do it, and I want to explain a little bit more, is she is taking his love of the reptiles and turning it into educational because that's where he wants to go in life, but it's also where his mind is at. So instead of taking this beautiful round peg that Matthew is and shoving him in the square hole, she is saying, let's carve out our own hole and make a life for you that works for our family. Yeah. She really, yes, she put, makes sure he can read and write on level, but she makes sure that he has a passion for learning. How many of our children go to school and that's Matthew in the corner checking his homework. But how many of our kids go to school every day and come home and they don't have that passion? So when they're at home and you're trying to work on things with them, give them those things that make them passionate. If your child is really big into computer coding, let them code at home. Yep. Let them learn that. That is a very valuable skill in today's society. Reptiles and herbologists are a very, they're always going to be needed. They, reptiles are part of the ecosystem. We're going to need them forever. So she is finding Matthew's niche in the world now and helping him use it for future. Now, how... Do you use a traditional lesson plan? Nothing I do is traditional. Um, now, help me remember, what do you mean by traditional lesson plan? Are you talking about curriculum out of the box? And it tells I'm us talking, exactly you get what the we do. Box the curriculum and there you go. Nope. Nothing he has. It is all, we collect it. it you know, he, he doesn't do well with sit down at the table and do your sheets. Um, we will go out on the front porch and have our e e eclectic, gr literally pile of stuff and sit on the front porch and do our math lesson. Dewey's, Dewey's um, grammar lesson there. Um, while we're driving to God knows where for the day, he will uh, go over his term deck. Um, there is nothing traditional about how he learns and the way he learns. We will go on nature hikes. Imagine that. Matthew, as a herpetologist in training to be, you know, doing nature hikes and finding out, you know, how to read the weather. That's science. And if he's taking notes, then there's your grammar. So there's, you know, you kind of get the idea what I mean by there's nothing traditional that we do. 
Well, I know you plan trips. Um, you recently came back from a very exciting trip. And I know in your planning of these trips, you make him plan the trip with you. He yes. researches where he wants to go. He yes. figures it out. Was he not the one that came up with the cave idea in the begin in the first place? Um, both of us did. Um, he, I was we 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 decided we was going to, instead of doing Christmas gifts to each other, we're going to do a Christmas trip. Because I still got Christmas present that he's never unwrapped. Uh, he unwrapped it, but he never played with it upstairs on uh, my, my dresser. And I'm like, I'm not spending another $100 on something that he's not going to care about. So we decided that we're going to go. We looked at it. We looked at the weather. Again, there you are, science. Uh, and math, distance from our house. Um, where we wanted to go. And we was like, you know what? It's Christmas, so we're going to go south. And we live in Ohio. So we went down to Kentucky. And we was looking at, and he wants to do anything off the beaten path because he is a high-functioning autistic kid. Um, so he didn't want to do something that was going to have a lot of crowds. So I'm like, hey, guys, I found this. What do you guys think? And it was off the trail cave exploring. And when I mean off the trail, I'm talking about they get off of the path. And he he looked at me and says, I want to do it. I'm like, sure, let's do it. And, you know, we explored and we looked at cave um, animals before we left. And then when we got into the cave, we was walking through the river of the cave and he got to see a cave crawfish cave beetles things that he had already studied about and you know what you know what does cave bacon look like he got to see a picture of it but he got to see what cave bacon looked like cave fried eggs look like um, after seeing it in a textbook it was you know he got to be up close and personal and find out you know you know that a cave breathes and he was like this is so cool so these are the things that he got to do. And, and then he got to go underground zip lining. So, you know, he, these are the things that I allow him to do. And I allow him to look at, find out, and we study. And um, he's literally uh, figuring out also how much is it going to cost. There's math. Real life planning his family is going to thoroughly enjoy the idea that he knows how to plan a trip. Now in this, when you say real life planning, um, I want to make it clear that you also do life skills planning. You talk about money, you talk about budgeting, you yep. talk about planning trips, but you also talk about these skills that I'm lacking severely with teaching Jack and Jack and Matthew are very close in age, but Matthew is learning to cook with you. Matthew, yes. I have to tell you a funny story about Pauline. She will do anything to get Matthew to learn anything. <laughs> now, one day her and Matthew were doing science and I don't remember the exact lesson plan. But she said that she was going to stand on her head and drink from a cup. And this woman took video of standing on her head drinking from a cup. But do you know what? That boy never forgot that lesson. Because she made it so out of the box just for him. Yes. And that's what, and that's what we do. Um, I'm constantly coming up with something and um, he still tells the story about how I took a pillow and tried to stand on my head and how I bent in half, my neck in half, trying to drink out of the cup. So he still talks about that. So now when you homeschool day, it looks like, I know your homeschool day is crazy. You're in the car, you're in, on the front porch rocking in the rocking chairs you're at tutors, you're under the tree in the summer, you're on trips. So you traditionally do not sit at a desk very long, do you? No. Um, we maybe sit at the dining room table 
maybe in a total of an hour and combined. I mean, that's mainly to do his math and his red words and his red words. I just showed my husband. My husband is a college graduate. I just showed him his Matthew's red words this weeks. And he, my husband said, I know only one of them. <laughs> So, and he tested out of a couple because he knew how to spell it. He knew how to say it, how to spell it, knew the part of speech, knew the definition of it, and knew how to use it in a sentence. And if he knows all that, then you know what? There's no reason for him to know it. Move on. Yep. So you don't focus on, they say you have to work on this for so long. Once he has it, you're done. Exactly. There's no reason. If he knows one plus one is equals two then why not move on to something more complex and that's what we do you know and as for uh, back to the question um what does my homeschool typical day look like um a lot of, i will drive him to classes different tutors different field trips um different social occasions um he for people that you know are worried about that um, social aspect. Um, there's lots of things to get out there and get into. Um, he, Matthew himself is involved in his youth group. He is involved in church. He, uh, is involved in karate, um, some social groups that he is working on his, um, executive functioning skills. Um, he was involved in trail life for guys. Um, but, he is involved in um, gear up um, for church with church. There's so, um, trying to think of you know anything else that that kid is involved in. Oh, of course, all his reptiles, his reptile shows that he goes to monthly if he chooses to. Um, so, and not to mention, he just hangs out, hangs out with his friends. Now. I'm going to ask a question that everyone has on their mind, but no one's willing to say what happens when he finishes high school. Um, he's planning on going to college. So he does have mm -hmm. that option. It is not, I hear a lot of people say, but if you homeschool, there's no college. I'd yes. like you to kind of explain that. Yes. College is a very real option. Yes, he is planning on going to college. That's how he's going to get his herpetology degree. Um, depending on what the college chooses to do, you know, do they do they accept my diploma and my transcripts of all the things that my records that he has done X and Y amount, amount of many hours in math and X many many hours in science, or does he need to get a um, regular GED? Um, I can say this much right now: um, the GED test that um, most high schoolers today cannot um, pass that um, GED test. Um, it is a very difficult, rigorous. Um, mm -hmm. I have taken it myself. Um, Jack actually choices. took it. They made all the grade nines take it a couple of months ago, the GED and the SAT test. And I was shocked in ninth grade that they were taking that test. Yeah. They all failed miserably. Yes. So, you know, he is planning on doing that. Um, that is that is one of his goals is to become a herpetologist. So he'll have to go into and get a um, college degree for that. And that's why we are heavily saturating him in science and in math and learning in his um his writing or his OG tutor is making sure that he can effectively use grammar properly and writing out papers because you know as a herpetologist he wants to be a field herpetologist which means he'll go out into the fields and research different animals and finding them and be able to make written descriptions of them so those are the things he's going to have to know so that's why we focus so heavily on those things now, how has homeschooling benefited Matthew and your family as a whole? Um, I feel that it has definitely knitted us very tightly together as a family. We have a way better um, communication lines um, as, you know, for 
knowing what I, um, how I parented my oldest to how I parented parenting Matthew presently. Um, it's totally different because I solely understand him. And also we have a closer relationship and we're able to, you know, and we're able to do things as a family, we're able to travel and I'm able to use those experiences and bring those into his homeschool life. One of the things he's wanting to do and next year is to, he's planning, he's wanting to go to Arkansas. I'm trying to talk him into Niagara Falls, but he's wanting to go to Arkansas. He said, Arkansas, he said, is less people. Niagara Falls, he said, is more touristy. He said, not, Arkansas is not. He said, he, he wants to go there to a diamond field and where he can dig diamonds. He said, it's, a very, it's, it's um, less crowded. So for him to be able to have that voice, to be able to, and that would give him the voice and give him the ability to be able to have the training ground to be able to talk and effectively communicate as most of our kids that has special needs is not able to have that voice and be able to exercise and to learn how to use it properly. Now, unfortunately, we are running out of time. So if you have any questions for Pauline, please ask. If we don't get to your question, please go to group. She will be in group. We will be discussing more later. And I'm actually going to post my last question for her in group today so that she'll have to answer it there. <laughs> and she, uh, she's loving me. I'm going to hear about this later. Um, I'm going to ask in group about if people are considering it. And that way, if you are considering it, you can follow the posting group where she explains what to consider and what she considered. And she can help walk you through if you have questions in this consideration process. Angela, I love, Angela, I love Colorado. Colorado has a college specifically for young adults with special needs. That is amazing. Now, we have a question that came up a few minutes ago. Alicia Stevens, um, let's post in group about this as well. She thinks you're awesome. She loves snakes as well, but no bugs. Now, her daughter that. loves Five Nights at Freddy's, Roblox. And then how would you take that, Pauline, and make that more educational? Um, the, the Roblox is, would be a wonderful thing to be able to, um, to build upon because if I remember correctly, that is more like a Lego virtual Lego thing. And you can take that into math by, you know, okay, you have, I'm going to go back to my Minecraft days whenever I was wor working with Matthew with, with Minecraft and homeschooling. I asked him, hey, you've got these sheep you, and you've got to have this parameter of a um, fence. I want you to tell me how many sheep you can get into that, sh into that fence. That teaches, that teaches parameter. That teaches also area. And um, those kind of things where you can literally build upon that robo blocks. You know, yes, it is a game. Yes. But you know what? Got to go where the kid is. Now, just to add to that, I want to say when Minecraft was huge, we got um, Jack and then we passed him on to my nephew. They had books, actually storybooks made for Minecraft mm -hmm. novels. They had math workbooks made. So you can look into resources like that, which keeps it that mindset of that video game or that whatever and make it educational. Um, you could do one of Pauline's favorite things, have them write you a story about it. <laughs> she, Pauline's going to laugh, but when Matthew gets mad at his mother, he will sit down and write stories on how he is angry at her, what she has done to slight him, and how he feels and what he is going to do about it. So he doesn't realize that by writing these huge expansive letters using all these big words like you're frustrating me and I can't handle your attitude, things like that, he doesn't realize he's actually doing work. 
He thinks he's just getting back at mom for being mean today. Or he will take uh, a funny story or instance that has happened within our house. Um, like whenever his male gar- garter got out of his condo from the second floor, made it down to the first floor, and we had just gotten back from eating pizza and eating, drinking a two liter of pop um, after a 30 minute drive on a 46 year old woman's bladder. Imagine how full that was. And I walk into the bathroom and I find his albino garter on the bathroom floor. Needless to say, I didn't have to use the bathroom no more. And the next day he got his writing assignment. Whenever I was reading it to him, I about died because it had, it explained his writing assignment was describe a funny situation that had that happened and describe it in detail. Well, he immediately said, mom finding checkers. (laughs) So he wrote a beautiful story, and it, it and it, it the, the assignment said take seven days. It took him two to perfect it, so we was able to move on quickly. So and he's able to. I think the key for Matthew is you find something that he loves so much, you're not spending an hour dragging your heels. He's mm-hmm. let's go, let's go, let's go. He was writing the story as I was reading it because the the curriculum that I use is called writing strands for writing. And it literally breaks it down into small bite-sized steps day to day. And he was literally writing the story as I was reading it. Oh yeah, that's how, you know, you're standing there shaking and quivering with checkers in your hands. And you know, that, that was one of his perfect stories. And he has many, many other, I'm sure he could probably write a book on the things that I have done. And he um, has wrote about them. And of course, I mean, come on, we're talking about a boy. Yes, he talks about burps and he talks about farts. I I have a girl. We still talk about the same things. Oh, okay. I'm I'm an all boy mom, so I don't know these things. I just know what boys talk about. They talk about boys and farts and farts and burps. I'm like, whatever. Riley <laughs> farted so loud the other day, she scared herself and she goes, ooh, that would have been a good one if people were around and didn't know because that would have scared them too. <laughs> yeah, he's got one. It's called the, I think it's called the Atomic atomic Burp and the Nuclear Fart. That was his story. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah, he, he's he got them, let me tell you. He he. Planted somebody in the in the wall with purple and green gas coming out of their mouth and, from the fart. <laughs> well, I want to thank all of you for joining me today, Paulina. I especially want to thank you. Um, you're one of my best friends. Yes, and you're the person that I call and I immediately say, "Just talk." Yep, and you know. So, if you have any questions for Pauline, please join us in our Facebook group. I will also be answering, getting her to answer the question on advice for anyone considering homeschooling. So if you're even thinking about it, please come see Pauline in the group. Even if your child is newly diagnosed in two, because Pauline made up her mind right then and there. Yeah. When he was born, she knew he needed to be with her. He needed to do this journey they were going to take this journey of education as a mother-son team so thank you for joining us today i'm jen eggert and you can join me live every monday at 1 p.m eastern for more parenting tips remember you can always join our group at lackeykid.com forward slash group and i want you to remember our new landing page is at lackeykit.com forward slash ask. I do see it in the comments a few times. Please click that landing page. Check it out. It's brand new. I really like it. I'm really happy with it. So check us out. Join us in group. We will be continuing the conversation. Alicia, um, join us in group because 
educating your daughter using the things that you were talking about, the Five Nights at Freddy's and the Roblox, that's something you can really work on. So thank you everyone for coming. I can't wait to talk to you again next Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, remember, every child brings good luck.